Okay, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Ask the Experts. My name is Robin Daly and I'm the Technical Advisor for Nutrition and I'm here joined by Ms. Kenya Paramo, nutritionist from INCAP working with us here at the Ministry of Health. So today's session, we will focus on nutrition, um, giving some pointers for healthy eating and also how we can maintain healthy lifestyle while we're going through um, COVID and also other recommendations for nutrition. So as we look at nutrition, we need to keep in mind that nutrition is important because our bodies need nourishment for growth and for bodily functions. Good nutrition helps us to fight disease and sickness. We see that many times people are not concerned about nutrition or food unless they're sick or they're ill. But a part of being healthy, we get to look at what foods help us to maintain good health, what foods help us to protect our immune system and fight off illness. Our body's defense mechanism is our immune system and we must protect it. Buying vitamins or supplements cannot replace food. There is no one food that we can buy that will help us to be healthy. We have to have it as a lifestyle. We have to have healthy eating as a priority. Natural foods is a very good way to get nutrients. So what makes up a healthy diet? When we talk about healthy eating, we must refer to our food-based dietary guidelines. These guidelines are an educational tool that is used to teach about good nutrition. There is no one special food that will boost your immune system or give your body healing benefits. It's a, a group of foods. It's an amount of foods, it's variety. We want to promote healthy eating. We must keep four main points in mind. So our guidelines focus on eight pointers and we will just focus on four main ones. The first one that I want to mention is eating more fruits and vegetables. We cannot talk about good nutrition without highlighting this point. When we're eating fruits and vegetables, we need to make sure that we maintain natural. We don't want to be drenching our vegetables with dressing or overcooking them. These take away some of the nutrients. The second point is also looking at using natural spices and herbs in daily meal preparations. So I know right now we're seeing a lot of people um, stocking up on garlic and ginger, and these are excellent. We, we encourage these and we promote these, and these are parts of our guidelines. It's not a new message that we're promoting to the public. So ginger, garlic, onion, rosemary, all herbal-based seasonings, cilantro, colantro, natural is always best. We try to move away from bottled seasonings as well, and we encourage more natural. So this is not new for us. One of the most important guidelines or healthy eating tips is looking at reducing salt, sugar, and fat from the diet. This one is a bit challenging because we love salt, fat, and sugar. It forms a big part of our taste buds, and many of our foods are highlighted in this. And this goes also to the purpose of Wellness Week. Salt, sugar, and fats promote NCDs or non-communicable diseases such as obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. So we have to be very careful with foods that are high in these types of, in these types of um, products. So looking at fats, we want to promote healthy fats. What are healthy fats? Plant-based fats, oil, so avoiding foods high in shortening, lard, hardened fats. Those are the unhealthy types. The plant-based and liquid oils are healthier. Fats also increase the fat level in the body and increase risk for heart disease and also obesity, especially if they're not burned off. Healthy fats, we have a lot of avocado around. We have, like I said, plant-based seasoning um, oils. These are very helpful. Sugary foods, another unhealthy product. Sugar weakens the immune system. So the more sugar we're putting into our body, the more our bodies are, are being weakened and our immune system won't be strengthened. So sugary drinks, we try to avoid these and we try to avoid even alcoholic drinks. It's not healthy for the immune system. So excessive alcohol use weakens the immune system as well, raises blood pressure, and puts your body at a less 
chance to fight illness. So salty foods, another unhealthy product. And we love to have a lot of salt in our foods. Foods that are salty, we're looking at a lot of canned foods, processed foods, fried foods. We want to avoid these foods as much as possible. These foods also raise our blood pressure and put us at risk for other health diseases, which can contribute also to heart disease. The last point for our guidelines is looking at being physically active, especially as we look at promoting mental health. We have to look at our mental health and our physical health is important to eating healthy, to eating healthy and being healthy. Physical activity helps us to manage and to prevent disease. So the more active we are, the better we feel, the better we are. We cannot have good health if we're not physically active. I want to move into another point of looking at vulnerable or at-risk groups. We have to highlight these groups of persons because they're very, um, they're like it says, at risk. So they, they have special needs when it comes to nutrients. So we're looking at older persons, children, pregnant women, and persons with health conditions such as diabetes, heart disease. These persons normally have specific nutrient requirements. So bodily changes and complications that put them at risk for health. So good nutrition is very important for these groups. We need to look at what are some points we can do in times like these. Basic tips to promote would be drinking more water, avoiding sugary drinks, avoiding salty and sugary foods, processed foods, fast foods, aim for more natural foods. We want to keep that concept in mind. Natural is always best. The less proce processing, the less cooking you do to a food, the more nutrients you can get from it. So oats, corn, whole grains, ground food, beans, these are some examples that are common and affordable. Fresh fruits, especially and fresh fruits and veg, especially dark green vegetables is very healthy and beneficial to our health. Avoiding alcoholic drinks, especially excessive consumption. So these are tough times. I know many people might refer to alcoholic drinks as a means of coping, and we are encouraging persons not to do this. It not only weakens the body's immune system, but it actually puts you more at risk for mental issues, more anxiety, more stress, and you become addicted to these products. So we're promoting healthy activities, dancing, being active, gardening, trying to stay in a healthy way, active in a healthy way, and also as much as possible trying to consume foods that are natural and not detrimental to health. Other nutrition related points is looking also at food safety. We have to keep in mind that food safety is important for nutrition as well. How foods are prepared, the hygiene involved when cleaning, preparing, preparing food. And also we want to look at, we're still promoting breastfeeding so that forms a big part of nutrition as well. Um, our campaigns are still ongoing. So even if you are sick, we're still encouraging breastfeeding. Looking at appropriate feeding for children. So children under five are very vulnerable and they're a part of our at-risk group. So what we're feeding our children is very important, especially under the age of five. So we don't want to be giving too much, and this is even for us too, we don't want to be eating too much junk foods and having foods that are con that constitute empty calories. We want to aim for fresh fruits, vegetables, natural foods, and avoiding too much fatty foods and salty foods. And the same thing that we want to feed our children. And also the same principle applies for pregnant women and older persons. We have to keep in mind the concept of having foods that are packed with nutrients that will help us to fight illness and help us with our growth and development. Lastly, I'll make mention that Wellness Week is one of the times that we use to promote healthy eating and healthy lifestyles in the aim of preventing chronic diseases and non-communicable diseases. So throughout the region, Central America and the Caribbean, they are celebrating Wellness Week this week, which is the second week in September. For us in Belize, we are going to be celebrating our Wellness Week the last week in September because it has been our tradition for the past five years because um, we normally have a lot of festivities in the month of September and usually we wait until all the festivities are over and we have a big focus on Wellness Week. So we have no distractions with partying and etc. 
But this year, the theme is Power Through Collective Action. There is a focus on mental health, which we will highlight, and the focus is also preventative measures for NCDs. So we will use this time again, which is upcoming, to promote health and wellness and, of course, good nutrition. So stay tuned to our details. We will be doing our usual wellness checks. We must keep our bodies um, in tune with health so we have to make sure we do our checks that's one way we know how healthy we are by checking we will have our webinars on nutrition we will also talk about substance abuse which directly links to mental health and of course promoting physical activity so at this time i will turn you over to miss kenya paramore so she, paramore, so she can do a translation in spanish for our viewers yeah. Como Miss Robin decía, uh, la alimentación saludable es aquella que nos ayuda a tener un buen crecimiento y desarrollo, pero en el caso de que una persona tiende a consumir alimentos más ricos en grasas, sales y azúcares, puede tener consigo el padecimiento de enfermedades crónicas no transmisibles, como la diabetes, hipertensión, diferentes tipos de cáncer, y sobre todo mencionar que el sobrepeso y obesidad es una enfermedad y tenemos que verla como tal. Uh, no existe una píldora mágica, no existe una pastilla que uno se toma y está saludable. La alimentación saludable podemos basarla en nuestra canasta básica de alimentos que tiene Belice, que incluye como parte de las recomendaciones el consumo de frutas y vegetales. La Organización Mundial de la Salud recomienda consumir tres frutas diferentes al día. Puede ser un banano, naranja, sandía, aquellos que tengamos a disposición en nuestro hogar. También consumir vegetales diferentes, utilizar para cocinar hierbas naturales, desechar los cubitos magis, todos esos productos envasados y preferir el consumo de aquellos como culantro, orégano, vacil, laurel, ajo para condimentar nuestras comidas. Eh, parte de la alimentación saludable, como bien decíamos, eh, el consumo de frutas y vegetales se tiene que incentivar desde niños. Hay personas que dicen... Uh, no me gusta consumir vegetales y tiende a consumir más productos envasados, empaquetados, pero tenemos que incentivar desde la lactancia materna eh, continua durante los primeros seis meses de vida y continuar con la alimentación uh, complementaria después de los seis meses, incentivar a los niños por parte de las mamás, educarlas sobre incluir más frutas y vegetales a la preparación de las comidas de estos bebés porque ello va a traer consigo el éxito de la alimentación balanceada. Luego, cuando los niños están en periodo de crecimiento y desarrollo para ir a la escuela, tenemos que evitar colocar en su merienda escolar juguitos envasados, galletas, dulces, porque esto va a provocar que sean niños que sufran de sobrepeso y obesidad. Entonces tenemos que promover el consumo de las frutas y vegetales como parte de las meriendas de estos niños y sobre todo seguir con estas actividades de promoción de los huertos escolares. En el caso de los adultos, las recomendaciones fundamentales son disminuir el consumo de azúcares, el consumo de azúcares de preparación de refrescos, um, de galletas, de dulce, de aquello que uno dice, tengo ansiedad, voy a comer una galleta, un dulce, preparar cinco tazas de café al día y colocarle azúcar. Todo eso son um, actividades que uno realiza el día a día y no se percata que está consumiendo un exceso de azúcares que puede traer consigo el sobrepeso y la obesidad. En el caso del consumo de las grasas, uh, es preferible que uno consuma Uh, semillas mixtas como maní, marañón, frutos secos como pasa, el coco que es una grasa saludable y también el consumo de agua de coco como fuente de hidratación. Uh, los jugos envasados, los productos empaquetados son ricos en grasas, azúcares y sales y también pueden tener problemas a largo plazo y corto plazo las personas que lo consumen de hipertensión y enfermedades cardiovasculares. Por ello es preferible eh, aprovechar el consumo solamente de agua como sustituto, sustituto de cualquier tipo de bebida azucarada. Y sobre todo continuar con la actividad física, muchas veces por la situación en la cual estamos, las personas tienden a estar más tiempo en su casa, pero sí pueden realizar actividad física. La recomendación es realizar 30 minutos al día, puedes estar en su televisor, poner música, mantenerse activo y sobre todo ayudar a que los niños se involucren en estas actividades. 
Y bueno, como parte de las actividades que el Ministerio de Salud ha estado organizando junto con INCAP y otros organismos es la promoción de la lactancia materna. Tuvimos nuestra Semana Mundial de Lactancia Materna. La lactancia materna es la primera vacuna de protección para los niños para fortalecer su sistema inmunológico y por ello es necesario seguirla promoviendo también alimentación complementaria, nada de los productos envasados, sino recuperar nuestra cultura, de tener nuestros vegetales, nuestra fruta, nuestros cereales, nuestro maíz, um, avena para los niños, banana para sus meriendas y sobre todo cuidar a nuestros adultos mayores ofreciéndoles alimentos saludables y promoviendo el consumo de agua. Eh, parte de las actividades también que el Ministerio de Salud estará desarrollando, como bien decía Miss Robin, es promover la Semana Mundial del Bienestar. Eh, durante esta semana vamos a tener diferentes actividades. Va a ser celebrada a finales del mes de septiembre, primera semana de octubre, y vamos a tener sesiones, foros para nutrición, actividad física, salud mental, con el fin de proponer eh, una vida más saludable durante esta situación. Y... Continuamos diciendo, promuevan el consumo de alimentos saludables en su hogar, traten de evitar todos los productos empacados, envasados y recuperen la tradición que tiene Belice de su mayor aporte de frutas y vegetales para el país. Bueno. Let's see if we have any questions. Okay, so while we see if any questions come in, um, we can start looking at promotion for, we will highlight a little bit about um, complementary feeding and breastfeeding for nutrition. Um, first of all, one of our messages that we would like to promote for breastfeeding is to look at mothers who may feel afraid of doing breastfeeding if they're sick we are actually advocating that you can breastfeed still um, breastfeeding is the first nutrition that a child receives and we're still advocating for this so we want to make sure that mothers wear a mask we still practice our hygiene measures so hand washing um, sanitizing any item that might come in close contact with the child so we still encourage breastfeeding and as soon as The breastfeeding is promoted from six months, zero to six months, up to two years. And at six months, there is a need for a child to start receiving other foods. So during this time, we encourage healthy foods for the child. We have information and educational information that is being shared in terms of what types of foods is helpful for a child during this time. So normally the first foods for nutrition for a child transitioning from breast milk is looking at foods such as staples, um, fruits. It has to be foods that is very soft and foods that the baby can tolerate. We norm normally don't try to give the baby unhealthy foods as the first types of foods. So we normally look at having foods such as banana or potato, cassava, and we try to encourage feeding one food at a time rather than giving a bunch of foods and this is to to see whether there is any allergic reaction or whether the baby can tolerate that type of food another tip is many times persons would start giving the baby snacks coke um, coffee unhealthy foods that that will not help the baby's growth a baby needs to have certain nutrients we're looking at having foods that will help the baby to to thrive so We always want to make sure that the baby has a variety of different foods and they're all healthy. There's nothing salty. There's nothing fatty or oily that's given to the child during this complementary phase. Also, during this time, when the child reaches about eight months, that's when we would expect the child to start getting protein or meat. So normally the first six to eight months, between six to eight months, we encourage mostly staple foods and fruits and certain vegetables. When the baby hits eight months, it's a good time to start with protein and to look at pieces of meat, eggs, and even at this time, like for example, milk is not given until the baby is actually one. 
So that's when the child can have some, um, I would say powdered milk. That's okay at that time. But before that, no. And of course, if you can continue breastfeeding during this time, we encourage this still. Um, I'll pass so Kenya can do a little translation. Um, como mencionábamos de la alimentación complementaria, estamos todavía continuando la promoción de la lactancia materna, la cual debe ser de 0 a 6 meses exclusiva. ¿Qué quiere decir? Que no se le ofrecen té a los niños, no se le ofrece infusiones, no se le ofrece juguitos envasados o jugo de fruta, solamente lactancia materna exclusiva. Ni siquiera se le puede agregar agua porque la lactancia tiene todos los nutrientes que el bebé necesita. De, ser, de seis a ocho meses tratamos de incentivar a las mamás que empiecen la alimentación complementaria probando durante tres días un solo alimento. Un ejemplo puede ser iniciar con zanahoria, dando puré de zanahoria, sin agregarle sal, sin agregarle aceite. Solamente el vegetal puro, un poco machacado y ofrecer a los niños a tolerancia. ¿Qué quiere decir? Hasta que ellos se sientan satisfechos e intentar darle este alimento durante tres días. Luego uno ya puede ir variando las vegetales, variando las frutas y, to y todavía incentivando a ofrecer leche materna. Um, a los ocho meses es necesario que la mamá introduzca, aparte de cereal, puede ser arroz, puede ser papa, puede ser yuca. Aparte de esto, es necesario que introduzca una fuente de proteína. Puede iniciar con el pollo, igual la preparación sin sal, sin aceite y sin ningún tipo de condimentos, porque necesitamos que tengan los nutrientes necesarios para promover su crecimiento y desarrollo. La lactancia materna se recomienda hasta los dos años de edad o más. Puede seguir con su alimentación complementaria, ofreciendo diferentes tipos de alimentos. Y no se recomienda que antes del año se le ofrezcan a los niños comidas con preparaciones con sal o refrescos naturales. Que uno dice voy a preparar un juguito de frutas para el niño, no es recomendado, es mejor que se consuman las frutas. Igual... Eh, Recordar que la alimentación complementaria garantiza una infancia saludable, es decir, que si tu, nuestros niños se mantienen saludables, eh, esto va a traer consigo hábitos saludables durante su vida adulta. Ok, so let's talk more now about prevention of NCDs and looking at foods that can contribute to a healthy lifestyle. I mentioned first of looking at reducing fat, sugar, and salt, but many times people have difficulties practicing this recommendation and this guideline because um, fats play a very big role. Let's say you're making foods, for example, flour tortilla is very common. Uh, many times we want to use shortening, and that's one of the recommendations that we don't encourage because it's a hardened type fat. Shortening is a processed type of fat. So we want to have more liquid oils in preparation. So we would encourage using vegetable oil to make your, your baked products such as tortilla and healthier oils to use, which would be mostly vegetable based, than to use shortening or lard or hardened fat. The same thing in your cooking and preparation. We don't encourage using a lot of lard or shortening because it's, especially the lard, it's animal based fat. And those are the fats that contribute to heart disease. So when we talk about having good fats, it's mostly the plant-based fats that would be beneficial and healthier to use. Looking at sugar, adding sugar to drinks. Sugar is one of the contributors to a poor immune system and it also contributes to overweight, obesity, especially if they're not burned off. And this is one of, the, one of the problems I think that we have, in addition to fat, that we have in the country. We have to look at what are we using to prepare our meals, what are we using to mix our foods, and what substitutions or recommendations we can make. So, for example, instead of adding two to three spoons of sugar for your coffee, we try to encourage your tea, we try to encourage reducing that to one, if any at all. Try not to be using sweetened milks, for our teas or to make milk and stuff like that for our children we try to use less added sugar especially with drinks in its natural state so eating fruits having fruit and water is recommended having less use of 
sugary desserts, things like that. So many times when we're eating desserts, we want to have extra frosting, we want to have extra toppings. We want to make sure we minimize the use of additional sugars. The same thing with sweeteners, especially when we look at also where we are in the country as it pertains to diabetes. We have very high levels of diabetes and one of the reasons for our promotion of wellness week is to highlight what are some of the effects that his bother what are what are some of the risk factors that put people more at risk for unhealthy eating and unhealthy living so sugar is one and also we have to look at fat like i mentioned so when we look at the diabetes rates when we look at the overweight obesity rates taking some of these out of the diet and making good recommendations is very beneficial Many times we are not active enough in our community or in our daily lives for us to be consuming the high levels that we do. So being more physically active is a very good uh, mechanism to help us to be healthier because if we want to be eating all the unhealthy foods, we have to make sure that we are exercising and we're burning them off. If we're not, if we are not then it will be stored as fat. And we have to keep that in mind. And also in these times, going through the COVID pandemic, many times people use food as a escape. They use food as a way of a coping mechanism and many times it's not healthy foods. So we have to condition our minds and we have to train ourselves to find healthier food options and also to be more physically active. So I'll turn you over to Kenya to do some translation. Como mencionaba, para promover la alimentación saludable en los adultos, primero uno tiene que regresar a la causa de las enfermedades crónicas no transmisibles como diabetes e hipertensión, que puede ser el consumo excesivo de sales, azúcares y grasas. Entonces tratamos de promover el consumo de grasas saludables como de girasol, oliva, soya, en vez de grasas a partir de animales y sobre todo consumir eh, grasas saludables a partir de semillas también, semillas mixtas como marañón, maní, entre otras. Um, la reducción también del consumo de sal ayuda mucho para las personas hipertensas y pueden sazonar su comida a base de ajo, orégano, perejil, laurel sin necesidad de agregar uh, sales adicionales. Y sobre todo recordar de que en base al consumo de azúcares es preferible mejor consumir agua porque uno necesitaría cinco naranjas para hacer un jugo más azúcares añadido y realmente uno con dos naranjas estaría satisfecho. Entonces también ver la relación entre las calorías de lo que uno está consumiendo a partir de bebidas, de jugos que uno prepara a partir de frutas y la cantidad que uno está comiendo con solamente dos y se siente más satisfecho. También es necesario promover la actividad física, como bien Miss Robin decía, eh, hay personas que tienen un escape del aburrimiento para seguir consumiendo um, comida, pero es importante también tratar de distraernos a partir de realizar actividad física en casa y sobre todo promover estos tipos de actividades recreativas con los niños. Ok, so at this time, I'll just highlight one of our, our reminders, which is our upcoming Wellness Week and our activities that we'll be posting. We want to encourage our viewers and we normally, like we've been celebrating Wellness Week for the past 12 years. So we want to continue our promotion. The Ministry of Health and our different units will be having panelist sessions, webinars, um, activities virtually, but activities that will be used to promote wellness and healthy living we have to take conscious proactive decisions as it looks at as, as we look at protecting our health and encouraging healthy lifestyles we cannot be fighting a pandemic if we are unhealthy it's going to be very difficult and i want to reinforce that fact we have to start taking small steps if it's even drinking more water having more natural foods we need to take these measures, avoiding sugary and salty foods if we want to have healthier lifestyles. So as we come up with our activities, um, which we, we will be promoting um, during the next two weeks, um, we will be having as much as possible virtual campaigns and we want to encourage the public to join us and support our wellness initiatives. We cannot wait until when we are sick to start taking care of ourselves. We have to look at taking small steps every day. So. Um, 
Look out for these activities. And as a wrap up, we want to thank you and remember to practice social distancing. Keep yourselves and your families safe by staying at home. If you must leave home, be sure to have a mask on. Regularly wash your hands, cough and sneeze in your elbow or in a tissue to be disposed of immediately. If you have any concerns, please call our hotline at 0800-MOH-CARE or visit covid19.bz for up-to-date information. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.